couple of weeks ago I did a video on how to make a kirtle dress or a long sleeved medieval style dress. I've had a few requests recently to do a more detailed version and so I've got one of my friends coming around this afternoon to help me out. This is a very very simple dress to do and it's very easy to get it into a very historically accurate kind of way. It's simply made of two rectangles and four gauze or triangles Two, one for each side and one for the front and one for the back. So if you're looking for a medieval style dress to wear or if you're looking to impress your girlfriend and make her a nice dress to wear this is a simple video to follow. Okay the first thing we need to think about is the exact sort of time period when we're looking to recreate. So this type of dress actually applies from the post-Roman period of the 6th century right through to sort of the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries. And there wasn't a great deal of change and development throughout that period. Um, roughly every 50 or so years there were slight changes. In the later period there's bigger changes to the neckline and also in the sleeve period uh, the sleeves developed during the sort of uh, 8th and 9th and 10th centuries into a more sort of modern type of sleeve from just a, a more primitive if you like a rectangular type of sleeve without a great deal of shape. I'm basing my dress today from a 13th century find. Okay so the first thing we're going to need to know uh, is, is going to be the historical period and you're going to need to do a little bit of research around this look up and it's very easy to do uh, to find some iconography from the period. The next thing we need to do is think about the fabric. So typically medieval people used either a woolen fabric or a linen fabric. So linen is fantastic uh, for the warmer climates and wool uh, is really good although I, I, I think it's best to keep a linen fabric next to skin and that doesn't uh, affect the wool in quite the same way. Uh, next is going to be colour. So yellows were a lot more available and uh, colours such as the reds and so on became much harder to get because there was a lot more work involved in creating those colours and later on this year I'm hoping to do some videos to look at how uh, different fabrics were dyed during the medieval period. Okay so we now have our style and we now have our uh, colour and we will now have our fabric. The next thing we're going to need to know is our measurements. Okay, so you're going to need, the first measurement you need to know is your head circumference so you can create a hole big enough to get through. Alright, the next thing is going to be your chest or bust measurement. You're going to need to know your hips and also the length. So the length is going to be, and the length is from the shoulder all the way down to the floor. Some people prefer a longer dress and other people seem to prefer a slightly shorter dress. Uh, now that we have those measurements, we can start to design our dress. Alrighty, let's design our dress. We need two rectangles and we need four triangles. We've determined that our dress is going to be 55 centimeters wide and 130 centimeters tall. And we've determined that the width of the dress is going to be 300 centimeters. Okay, that'll give us a lots of room and make a nice dress. Okay, we're going to subtract from that 300 the 55 times 2 which is 110 and that equals 190. We're going to divide that by 4 and that equals 47 and a half. To make things easy we'll just call it 50. All right. So that means each gore is going to be 50 centimeters wide and the next question is going to be the height of the gore. The gore are the triangles that we spoke about earlier. So that's the ones that go at the side and also at the front and the rear of the dress. And that is um, the height, is the length between your the floor and your uh, waist, basically. Um, and so in this case, we're saying 95 centimeters. Alright, so 
The last thing to work out is the two sleeves. This is really important. The sleeve pattern that I'm going to use is a fairly simple pattern and there are a couple of measurements that we're going to need to know for it. Okay, the first measurement we need to know, this is the arm measurement, right, you know? uh, so if you like the bicep, but it, it, this is a measurement that goes around your shoulder and then we have, so bicep, wrist and also the length of your arm that is the length between your cuff and your shoulder I would suggest leaving a few centimeters uh, in both in terms of length and also in terms of your wrist measurement a lot of people and I used to do this the first couple of times I made a, a, um, a garment and uh, you make the mistake where you measure the the wrist but you don't allow uh, an extra few centimeters so you can get your your hand through because you're going to need to form either a fist or something just to uh, to get your hand through the hole and so you need to allow yourself an extra four or five centimeters as a um, just a bit of slack just to get your, your wrist through you want enough room in the dress that you can function and work but not so much that it looks baggy uh, because these were a fairly close fitting garment uh, alrighty, so this is pretty much all the measurements we need to know and this is all of the uh, the detail we need. The last couple of things that I'll say is um, I like to leave about a centimetre and a half for seam allowance, sometimes two centimetres depending on how I'm working my seams. And lastly, when you buy your fabric raw, it's best uh, to wash it and iron it and that makes it very easy to um, to draw your pattern onto but also it means that uh, if you've washed it and dried it on the line first uh, you've basically pre-shrunk the fabric and you're not going to have any surprises okay that's all the information we need to know right now Not quite sure exactly how well you guys can see this, but we do have the two panels, the front and rear panels marked out along the side of this fabric. We have the two sleeves, uh, and then we have the four gores here. Let's get cutting. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to join the two sides together at the shoulders, and I'm also going to put in the two side gores. My girlfriend is not available at the moment, so I'm unable to do any fittings and so I'm going to have to rely on measurements. So the next thing I'm going to do is go and do the collar and the shoulders. Alrighty, we now have something that looks a lot like a dress. So the um, front and rear panels all seem to be sized pretty well. The side gores are on and they all look pretty good. The, um, the collar and the neckline look okay. So the next thing to do uh, is going to be the front and rear gores. The way to work out, uh, again, the position of the gore is the top of your hips, so your the pelvis bone, and um, it's, easier to find, it's easier to find for some people than others going to depend on your size and your shape and so on so um, but usually it's a couple of centimeters higher than your belly button uh, but again depends on your size and shape so you'll need to work that out for yourself in my case I'm relying on the measurements so we'll have to see how this goes a little bit nervous here because um, having done a fair bit of work I don't really want to go and make a mistake but we'll see how we go now adding a green trim to the bottom hems of the dress. 
This is going to help protect it when we're walking around at medieval festivals. It'll help protect it from the mud and the stones and that kind of thing, but also it's going to help protect all the seams and keep everything nicely together. So that's the sleeve button that I use and you can see the green trim down one side and the curvature shape on the other. The only thing left to go on now is the sleeves. I hate doing sleeves, I always get one of them wrong. So, all seems to come out the right way, and we've got the dress now complete. So, my girlfriend's here, and we're going to try it on. Alright, so that's come out pretty well. Very happy with that. Can be used as a dress on its own, or you can also you just use it as an underdress. There we go. Alrighty guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.